All right. So we're talking about concentration of solutions today. And concentration is just the ratio of the solute to the solvent. All right, the solute is what's being dissolved. The solvent is what's doing the dissolving, right? Um, last week we talked about what causes a solute to dissolve in a particular solvent, right? We talked about how quickly a solution forms. We did a lab this past week on properties of solutions. And so concentration is the next logical step, right? Because both of these solutions, they both have the exact same solute, they both have the exact same solvent. The only difference is the concentration, right? The ratio of, con of solute to solvent, ratio of solute to solvent. So the first unit we're gonna discuss is called molarity, which we represent with a capital M, and I usually underline it just to make sure that everybody who sees it knows that it's capital, because there's another one we're gonna talk about which also uses the letter M, but it's lowercase. So I underline molarity just to make it stick out and special, okay? Molarity is moles per liter. Moles of solute per volume of solution in liters. Moles per liter. Okay, molarity is moles per liter. Now these are the two most common mistakes I see students make in terms of molarity calculations. If I give you the mass in grams, a lot of students forget to convert it to moles. Oops. Or they convert it to number of molecules. Okay, that's not the right step either. Convert grams to moles. Or what if I give you the volume in milliliters? All right, I could do that. Because a milliliter is a very common unit that we use in the lab, right? Have you ever measured out a liter of anything this semester? No. Have you measured out 20 milliliters of something? Yes, okay? So milliliters are a very common units. So what if I gave you the volume of milliliters? You would need to convert to liters, right? Divide by 1,000. Move the decimal three to the left. So let's do this one together. Calculate the molarity of a solution made by dissolving five grams of this sugar in 100 milliliters of water. So, is it just five divided by 100 and I'm good to go? No, because that would give me units of grams per milliliter, right? I don't want units of grams per milliliter because if I just say five divided by 100, well, that would give me units of grams per milliliter. That's not what I want, right? I want moles per liter. So what do I have to do with this five grams? I have to convert to moles, right? What do I use to convert grams to moles? Avogadro's number or molar mass? Molar mass, right, from the periodic table. So six times the mass of carbon plus 12 times the mass of hydrogen plus six times the mass of oxygen, right? Got to calculate that molar mass as a pre-step. Can I keep my volume in milliliters? Can I keep it milliliters? It's moles per liter, right? So can I keep my volume in milliliters? No, I can't, right? I've got to convert milliliters to liters by dividing by 1,000, right? Or move the decimal three to the left. One, two, three. So if molarity is moles per liter, right? First, I've got to convert my grams to moles, carrying out extra decimal places because I'll round to this number of sig figs at the end. So five grams, I'm just rounding my molar mass. It's approximately 180. So I'm converting grams to moles. And then converting milliliters to liters. Right? My decimal place is right here. So I'm moving it one, two, three. Now this number had three sig figs, so this number needs to have three sig figs as well. Okay. Now I can divide. Right? 0 0.02778 moles divided by 0 0.1 liters. I've got three sig figs here, three sig figs here, so I need three sig figs here. Now in terms of units, in terms of units, you can write capital M. You can write capital M. Oops, that was from my previous class. You can write capital M as your units, or you could also write moles over liters. Okay, so if you wrote 0 0.278 moles per liter, that's fine too. Okay. 
but you have to have units, right? So your units are either capital M, and I underline it, because if you're one of those people who writes your M like this, right, that's gonna get you in trouble, okay? Because I'll look at that and be like, that's a lowercase m, and I'll mark you wrong, <laughs> right? If you always write rounded m's, make sure you make a conscious effort to make it pointy, okay? Because there's one that we're gonna talk about in a minute that is lowercase m. And obviously, if I think you're writing lowercase m, I'll mark you wrong, okay? So make sure you just underline it, or go with the extra effort to make that capital M pointy, or just write it out. You can just write out M-O-L over L, and that's fine too, there's zero ambiguity in that. Okay, so if you don't trust your handwriting, you can always just write it out. Does everyone see how we did this calculation? We have to convert our solute to moles, we have to convert our volume to liters. Those are the two steps we must do. <coughs> All right, let's think about this one. How many grams of sodium sulfate are dissolved in 15 milliliters of a 0.5 molar solution? How many grams? Oh, crud. Is grams part of the molarity formula? No, it's not, right? It's not. Let's think about this. If I take my 15 milliliters of 0.5 molar solution, right, I pour it out, I pour it into a beaker, put it on my hot plate or my Bunsen burner, crank the heat up high, boil off all the water, right, I'm left with how many grams? That's what this question is asking, right? When I boil off all that water, how many grams am I going to be left with? That's what this is asking me. So if we're doing a problem like this, we have to somehow get grams. Well, what's the formula for molarity? Molarity is equal to what? Moles over liters, right? There's no grams in there. But how could I get grams? If I solve for moles, right? If I solve for moles, I can then convert it to grams, yes? So that's what I'm gonna do. So, there are two ways to do this. You can either rearrange this equation and then plug your numbers in, or what I found most students would rather do, plug your numbers in, do the algebra, you're gonna get the same answer either way, okay? So the molarity is 0.5, so 0 0.50. Moles is what I'm solving for, so let's just call that X. And this is a 15 milliliter solution, 15 milliliters. Right, there are a thousand milliliters per liter. So that means I'm dividing by a thousand. So I'm moving the decimal three that way. So one, two, three. Right? 0 0.015. Do we agree? Now how do I get X by itself? Multiply both sides by 0 0.015 times 0 0.015, right? So x is equal to, where's the calculator going? 0 0.015 times 0 0.5, right? So my calculator gives me 0 0.0075. But is that grams? No, what is that? That's moles, right? So how do I get grams? I'm gonna have to do what? Have to convert moles to grams, right? So I take my work, 0 0.0075 moles. Now what do I need, Avogadro's number or molar mass? Molar mass, all right, so here we go. Let's calculate molar mass of sodium sulfate real quick. Uh, sulfur's 32 point something, 32.1 I think. 32.066. So I get 142.046 grams per mole. So 
times 0 0.0075. My calculator spits out 1.06535. Can I keep all those sig figs? How many sig figs am I allowed to keep? I've got two sig figs here. I've got two sig figs here. So how many sig figs can I keep here? Two. So how would I round that? 1.1. And my units would be grams. So if I take 15 milliliters of this 0.5 molar solution, pour it into my beaker, put it on top of the hot plate of the Bunsen burner, boil off all the water, the mass of solute that I'd be left with is 1.1 grams. Does this make sense? Okay, there are ones like this on your homework that's going up today. So I wanna make sure to go through it nice and slow so everybody sees how we're doing. Is everybody good? Let's do part B now. Didn't erase the board very well after my last class, did I? Okay. Um, so B is asking for milliliters. Okay, can I calculate volume using molarity equation? Yes, I can do that, right? If molarity is equal to moles over liters, can I not solve for liters and then convert it to milliliters? Yes, I could. Because in lab, you're not going to be measuring out liters of anything. right? You've never once this semester measured up a liter of anything. Not even come close. right? The biggest volume we've dealt with is probably what? 200 milliliters, 300 milliliters, somewhere in that neighborhood, right? So a liter is not a very practical lab unit. A milliliter is. All right, so the molarity is still 0.5, and the problem says I want to have 0 0.038 moles. So which variable am I solving for? The denominator, right? So I'm just plugging in, or you could rearrange this and then plug in, either way it works. All right, so 0 0.50 is equal to 0 0.038 over x. And we'll just let x be the variable you pick. You can use whatever variable makes you happy. You can draw a little happy face if that's what works for you. All right, multiply both sides by x. So that gives me 0 0.50x is equal to 0 0.038. Now I want to get x by itself. Divided by 0 0.50. Divided by 0. 5, 0. So x equals, take my handy dandy calculator, 0 0.038 divided by 0.5 gives me 0 0.076. But that's not liter, milliliters, is it? What is the unit of volume in the molarity equation? It's liters, right? The problem doesn't want to know how many liters. And just imagine, can you take a one liter flask and fill it up to 0 0.076? No way, no way. There's not tick marks anywhere close to that small. All right, so I've got to convert this to milliliters. So 0 0.076 liters, all right? There are a thousand milliliters per liter. In other words, removing the decimal three to the right, all right? So that gives me one, two, three. 76 milliliters. Is 76 milliliters something I could easily measure out? Yes. Is 0 0.076 liters something I could easily measure out? No way, no way. I give you a one liter beaker or one liter volumetric flask and say, here you go. There's no way you could do that. But you could do this, right? A liter is not a very practical lab unit unless you're working on a big scale. A milliliter is a very practical lab unit. <coughs> Is everyone cool on how we did these two problems? Because there's more than molarity calculations than just dividing moles over liters, right? I could take the molarity equation and solve for any of the other variables too. Okay, so make sure you understand how to do both of these because there are ones like this on the new homework that went up today as well, or is going up today, I should say. I haven't posted it yet. I'll post it sometime after class. So if you don't see it within the first, you know, few hours of the afternoon <laughs> means I forgot to turn it on for you to see, right? So make sure you, you know if you can't see it. Any questions on these two problems? We good? Like I said, I like to go through those nice and slow. All right, you take a second and do this one. 
What's the concentration of the solution that forms when 2.5 grams potassium chloride is dissolved in 500 milliliters of water? I'm gonna pause the recording. All right, let's go over this one. <clears throat> What's the concentration of the solution that forms when 2.5 grams potassium, <coughs> excuse me, potassium chloride is dissolved in 500 milliliters of water? <clears throat> First thing you need is the formula for potassium chloride, right? Because we can't do anything without that formula. What's the formula for potassium chloride? KCl, right. Because we can't do anything without formula. So is this just 2.5 divided by 500 and I'm done? What do I have to do? What do I have to do to the 2.5 grams? Convert to moles. What do I have to do with the 500 milliliters? convert to liters, right? So I've got two steps that I have to do before I can do my final molarity calculation. So carrying out extra decimal places in your number of moles, because we're gonna round at the end, right? We round our final answer to two significant figures. This value's got two sig figs, this value's got three. So I'm limited by the lack of accuracy of this measurement. So my final answer is 0 0.067. You could write capital M, or what's the other way you could write your units? If you don't trust your ability to write a pointy M, what's the other way that you could write your units? You could just write out M-O-L slash L. All right. Why do I keep what? I don't keep three sig figs, this number is two sig figs. Right, because that zero is not significant. So you could have also written out your units as M-O-L over L, either one. That's a good question, right? This leading in zeros are not significant. That's only got two sig figs. If you made a mistake on this problem, did you see where you made it? Questions on this problem? All right, why don't you try this one? What volume of 2.5 molar lead to nitrate solution contains 0 0.0500 moles of the salt? Now I didn't specify what unit I want the volume to be in, so that means you need to pick the most reasonable unit. I'll give you a second to try this one. All right, let's go over this answer. So I didn't tell you units that I wanted volume to be in, so that means you need to pick the most reasonable unit, right? You need to pick an, a unit that makes sense, that you could actually use in the lab. So we're solving for volume, right? If molarity is equal to moles per liter, like I said, you can rearrange it and then plug in, or you can plug directly in and then do the math, you get the same answer either way. When you do the math, you get 0 0.02 liters, 0 0.02. Okay, here's what a one liter beaker looks like. Smallest number on it is 50. So if I said, all right, fill this up to 0 0.02, is that something you could do? No, I couldn't even do that, right? Here's what a one liter flask looks like. This one doesn't even have graduation on it. It just is, it's one liter when you fill it up to this line right there. So could I say, here you go, fill it up to 0.02. Right? That's not practical. 0.02 liters is not a practical unit. But milliliters, hey, that's a practical unit, right? To convert liters to milliliters, move the decimal three this way. One, two, three, right? That gives me 20. But now I need to make it reflect my sig figs, right? It's not just 20 with a decimal, because this value has three sig figs. This value has three sig figs. So my answer here needs to have three sig figs as well. So it's not just 20 with a decimal, not just 20 with no decimal, it'll be 20.0 milliliters. Is 20 milliliters something that you could easily measure? Yeah, definitely. Make sense? Make sense? Make sense? If you made a mistake on this one, do you see where you made it? All right, do one more. How many grams of sodium bromide would I need to dissolve in one and a half liters in order to make a two molar solution. Go 
Okay, so this is another real world kind of problem. When I'm making your solutions to get labs ready for you guys, this is something I could ask myself. If I want you guys to have a 1.5, excuse me, if I want to have a two molar solution and I want to make one and a half liters of it so that everybody can have, you know, 20 mils or something like that, how many grams should I measure out? Right? That's a your world question. So what would I do? I have to do two steps here. What do I need to do first? Solve for, because grams is not part of the molarity equation, right? So what do I have to solve for first? Moles, right? You gotta solve for moles. And then what do I do? Then you can turn that into grams, right? <clears throat> so if molarity is equal to moles per liter, then how do I get moles by itself? Multiply both sides by liters, right? That gives me molarity times volume. Again, if you just plug straight in, it would be two is equal to x over, excuse me, yeah, two is equal to x over 1.5, multiply both sides by 1.5, you still end up doing two times 1.5, right? Either way, you're gonna do the same calculation. But the problem wants grams, I don't have a molometer, right? I can't go back to the balance, measure out a mole or something. But it can go back to the balance and measure out grams. Molar mass is approximately 103. My answer comes out to be 308.682. Now, a lot of students would get busted on this kind of problem for sig figs, because they'd round it to 309. That's what your average Joe student would do. Why? Because they'd say, oh, six, that rounds up to nine, I'm done. But 309, what's wrong with that answer? How many sig figs? That's got three. That's got three sig figs, right? Can I keep three sig figs? No, I can only keep two sig figs. So instead of 308, I need to round it all the way up to 310. No decimal. No decimal. Does this make sense? Everybody good on these kind of molarity problems? I think that's the last molarity one I have for you. All right, let's talk about dilution. This is something that I do for you guys when I'm prepping your labs a lot. So what I do at the beginning of the semester is I'll make some concentrated solutions with a high molarity, and then when it comes time for us to do the experiment that we're gonna do that week, I can then just dilute it. And that way I'm not constantly making a zillion solutions a semester. Right? I'm not making five molar and two molar and 10 molar and eight molar and one molar and 0.5 molar and 0.6 molar, right? I'm making one concentrated solution, and then I just dilute it. I'm not constantly measuring out grams and moles and all that stuff. So, the molarity of a new solution can be used, can be determined from this calculation. M1V1 is equal to M2V2. Where a molarity and volume, number one, go with the concentrated solution, and molarity and volume number two, go with the dilute solution. Now, I want to make an important note here about units, okay? This is an important note. You can get away with keeping your volume in milliliters when you do this so long as both of them have the same unit, okay? If the one's in liters and one's in milliliters, you're toast, right? But you can get away with keeping your volume in milliliters here because they'll eventually cancel each other out. Now I make the important distinction of saying that because next week when we do titrations, which are acid-base stoichiometry calculations, your volume absolutely must be in liters. You can't do it any other way, okay? But with dilution, you can get away with it if they're the same unit. One's in liters and one's in milliliters, though, you're in trouble, all right? So the best way that I recommend doing these kinds of problems is just by listing out your variables. So take your concentrated, figure out how much of the concentrated you need, pour it in, and then dilute with water. So let's do this one together. How many milliliters of five molar 
solution must be diluted to prepare 250 milliliters of 0.1 molar solution. So I just list out my variables, M1 equals, V1 equals, M2 equals, V2 equals. <coughs> and then you just pick which one's more concentrated, which one's more dilute. Okay, five is definitely greater than 0.1, right? So that means this one is five, and this one is 0 0.1. And we wanna know how many milliliters if we wanna make 250 milliliters here. Now again, two important things. Units must match And also, on the homework, watch what it asks for. Okay? Sometimes the problem explicitly states what volume in liters or what volume in milliliters. Okay? So sometimes on the new homework that's going up, it might flat out tell you, hey, I want volume in liters hey, I want volume in milliliters, okay? So make sure you're reading the question carefully. And also, just make a note to yourself, while we're taking notes on this, just put a note to yourself. Next week, in titrations, volume must be in liters, okay? Just make a note to yourself. Now, you can get away with not having it in liters, so long as they match, this is the one kind you can get away with it. But next week, we gotta stay in liters. When we do any sort of stoichiometry, we're gonna stay in liters. Okay, so here's my equation, M1V1. V1 is equal to M2V2. All right, so now I'm just plugging in. I can keep my milliliters, that's fine. They're the same unit. 5.0X is equal to 0 0.10 times 250. All right, how do I get x by itself? Divide both sides by five. So x is just gonna be 0 0.1 times 250 divided by, oh, not 0.5. Not sure what happened there, 5.0. There we go. 0 0.1 times 250 divided by five, x equals five. Now how many sig figs? Two, 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 so two. So what does that mean that I do? This means that I take 5.0 mils of the five molar solution, And how much water do I need to add to it? If I'm taking five and I'm diluting it to 250, right, and add 245 of water. Does everyone understand how we did that? Right, you take your five milliliters, there's your five mils of the concentrated, and then you've got to add enough water to make the total volume 250, so that means that's 245 H2O. Right. So that way the color here will be a lot lighter, right? You've diluted it. Does everybody understand how to do a dilution? You can solve for any one of the variables, M1, V1, M2, or V2, right? So long as you list out your variables, watch your units, and then the arithmetic itself isn't that bad. It's just mostly the multiplying or dividing. Everybody good? All right. Try to remember to erase the board so that I don't have to uh, pull the screen up and go, whoops, there's a whole bunch of in there. All right, you try this one. Let me pause the recording. All right, let's go over the answer here. 
So the problem I asked, whoops, problem I asked you was if 10 milliliters of a 10 molar solution is diluted to 250 milliliters, what is the concentration of the new solution? So to make this, what did I do? I took 10 milliliters and then how much water did I add? 240, right? 10 plus 240 gives me 250. This is something that I, I do quite regularly for you guys when I'm making solutions. I figure out, okay, how much of the concentrated solution do I need? How much water do I need to add? That'll give me my molarity, my new solution that I want. All right, so we list out our variables. M1, V1 equals M2, V2, right? We're solving for M2. So we can either rearrange this, like I did here, and then plug in, or you can plug everything in and then do the math. You'll get the same answer either way, right? Because your answer would be 10 times 10 is equal to X times 250. So X would be 10 times 10 divided by 250. Now here I converted to liters. Right? I converted to liters. I kept my answer. I, I converted my 10 milliliters to liters. So just be careful. Right? If you're doing a homework problem and the answers are all based off a of calculation in liters, you might need to go back and adjust your answer. But you still should get the same answer for point four. Do we agree? Now, also, check your work in terms of making sense. I took 10 milliliters of this concentrated solution and I added 240 milliliters to it. So my concentration should go down. It should go down a lot, right? If somehow my concentration of the dilute solution is greater than the concentration that I began with, I know I did my math backwards somewhere. I multiplied where I should have divided, etc. Okay, so make sure that you're looking at your answer and asking yourself, is it reasonable? All right, let's talk about this unit. It's called percent by mass. Not the same as molarity, it's completely different. Percent by mass. So here we're representing concentration as a percentage. Mass of the solute divided by the total mass of the solution. And you actually see this in several places. You see percent by mass and you see percent by volume used out in the world kind of frequently. I've got a 5% hydrogen peroxide solution. I've got a 5% glucose solution. Okay. Those are things that you've probably seen in biology or nursing classes, that sort of thing. Now some of those are percent by mass and some of them are percent by volume. Percent by mass and percent by volume work the exact same way except percent by volume you'd substitute volume instead of mass. So mass of solute divided by total mass of the solution times 100. So why don't you try this one? What's the percent by mass concentration of acetic acid in a vinegar solution, that's what vinegar is, it's just diluted acetic acid, that contains 270 grams of acetic acid and 122.8 grams of water? I won't even pause the corner here. I think it won't take you very long. Does the identity here of what the solute is make a difference in your calculations? No, it doesn't, right? Because you don't have to convert grams to moles. So knowing that it's acetic acid doesn't make a difference in terms of the math. Because there's no moles to deal with. still see a lot of people writing, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording. All right. So, is it 270 over 122.8? I tell you, that's not correct. What do you have to do? It's not 270 over 122.8. What is it? What do you have to do to get the bottom number? You have to add them, right? Because it's mass of solute over total mass. So it would be 270 over 
270 plus 122.8. And then keeping three sig figs, that would be 2.15%. Right, it's mass of solute over total mass of solution times 100, and then keeping three significant figures, 2.15%. Make sense? Did you get it right? Most common mistake is forgetting to add the bottom. All right, percent by volume works exactly the same way as percent by mass except now we're substituting the word volume everywhere we see the word mass. So if we're dissolving a liquid in another liquid, we would use percent by volume. If I'm dissolving, you know, um, ethanol in water, right, or acetone in water. The solute and the solvent, now we just use volume instead of mass. So percent by volume calculations work exactly the same way as percent by mass calculations. Exactly the same. Total volume goes on bottom. Volume of solute is on top. So why don't you try this one? 10 milliliters of acetone dissolves in 190 milliliters of water. What's the percent by volume of this solution? I'll pause the recording. Resume. All right, it's not 10 over 190, it's what? 10 over 200, right? 10 over 200. In terms of sig figs, I can only keep one significant figure, right? Because this 10 does not have a decimal place. Therefore, that means this value only has one sig fig. So my final answer, only has one sig fig as well. My units would just be percent. If you put the V slash V, that just means it's percent by volume. But so long as you say percent, that's good enough for me. Make sense? Make sense? All right, let's talk about parts per million, PPM. Maybe you've seen this before. Maybe you haven't, that's okay. Mass of solute over mass of solution times 10 to the sixth. Make sure your masses are in the same units, right? If this mass is in grams and this mass is in kilograms, your answer is going to be a train wreck because your units would be grams per kilogram. That wouldn't make sense, right? Make sure that your mass are in the same unit. Hint, hint, be careful. That's going to be on the homework. Watch those units. Because when the arithmetic's really easy like this, I have to do something to make sure you're paying attention. Right. So make sure you note that the units are the same. So when we use parts per million when the concentration is going to be really high, no, right? We'd use this when the concentration is going to be something really low. What's something that you can think of that you would measure in the parts per million? What's something that you think we could use? parts per million as a unit for. Maybe you've even seen it, you know, in watching the news or something. Yeah, atmospheric pollution is a good one. Or soil or water quality, right? These are, these are low concentrations. And here's parts per billion, PPB. The only difference between parts per million and parts per billion is the number you multiply by. Right? In parts per million, we multiply by a million. Parts per billion, we multiply by a billion. 10 to the sixth versus 10 to the ninth. Again, please, please be careful. Watch your units. If this one's in milligrams and this one's in kilograms, something's not going to work. You have to convert them both to the same unit. Watch your units. That's the number one mistake people make on this because, like I said, the math isn't hard. Math's very easy. What can get you would be the units of mass. And you know me by now. 
I like to throw things out there just to see if you're watching. Because that's what I do. All right, so we use these in small concentrations. You know, I already said environmental. You know, maybe you're talking about how much you have a hair sample and you're measuring the concentration of a drug. You know, you're doing drug testing. Or how much iron's in your blood, which probably wouldn't use parts per billion, but you could. All right, what about this one? 1 1.2 grams sodium chloride dissolves in 5,000 grams of water. What's the concentration in parts per million? Can we divide these as is? Grams and grams? Yes, we could, right? So 240 parts per million, billion, excuse me, million. I said sodium chloride dissolves in water. The solute is always the smaller concentration, the smaller number. Okay, what about this one? You're testing soil and a 10,000 gram sample contains 0 0.0995 grams of lead. I wanna know what's this concentration in parts per million and what's this concentration in parts per billion? All right, let's go over the answer here. The number's gonna be the same, the only difference is the number of zeros after it, right? Because we're gonna have the same number, we're just gonna be dividing it, I mean multiplying it by 10 to the sixth versus 10 to the ninth. All right, so it'd be 9.95 parts per million, 9,950 parts per billion. Three sig figs. Well, actually, if we're going by sig figs, technically we don't have one sig fig. Let's just pretend that the 10,000 gram has two sig figs in it, or three sig figs. Are we all in agreement on how to do this? Yes? Questions on this one? You made a mistake, you see we made it. Is everyone okay on how to enter that exponent into your calculator? To enter 10 to the six, you would type one E nine. Uppercase E, don't use lowercase E. That's totally different. Or you could type one, zero, 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 zero. Or you could type out all the zeros if you wanted to as well. All right, here's the reason why we have to lay awake at night obsessing of whether or not my capital M is pointy looking enough. Because it has a friend called molality, which looks very similar to molarity. And it sounds very similar to molarity, right? But this is called molality. So it's its long lost cousin. Molality we represent with little m, right? This is why we obsess about whether or not my m is pointy enough. Because little m is moles per kilogram, whereas molarity is moles per liter, right? Now, because this class is intro chem, we're actually not gonna do a whole lot with molality in this class. But if you go on to take general chem series, we're gonna do a lot with molality and general chem. So if anyone in here is planning on going on to take the general chem sequence after this class, we'll use molality in there a good bit. Um, but here in intro chem, we're actually not gonna do too much with molality, but I want you to at least see it, okay? So that when you get to the next level, you have seen molality before, you understand the difference between molarity and molality, right? Molarity, capital M, moles per liter. Molality, little m, moles per kilogram. <coughs> So this is why, <coughs> excuse me, this is why we have to make sure our little m's look little and our big m's look big. So this is a table, it's actually not from your textbook. It's a nice little uh, combination of all the units we've done today. We actually didn't do mass volume percent, so you don't really need to worry about this. But I will give you this table or something similar to it. On your exam, this is intro chem. I'm not gonna make you memorize all these. Go to gen chem and I'll make you memorize them there. But here in intro chem, I will give you this table or something very similar to it. You just need to be able to do the math that goes along with it. Fair enough? Fair enough? So that's where we're gonna stop for today.